So uh, great. So let's start the class. Uh, again, just a little bit about the class. I'll just uh, give this some overview of the whole, what was the past and what was would be the future. The past, we talk about some uh, set cover coverage, a unique coverage problem, very important problem, essentially very fundamental for network design. Then we were talking about general networks and the idea is that we want to uh, always, that was the ideal case that we can approximate somehow graphs by trees for which we can solve almost all problems uh, by dynamic programming in polynomial time. So that was the general idea that we are still following up. And here we want to talk, uh, uh, so we talk about it, we talk about connectivity and cut, but here we talk about connectivity problems. And I want to say that even that is sometimes become non-trivial. So using the fact that it is three, uh, and this is an important fact, but for some problem still it might be non-trivial to solve even that. These are like some open problem that has been there. And even also whether you want to use embedding into uh, trees, or you want to embedding into standing trees, that also can become important. We will talk about it, then we will go about some of the cut problems, and then we will continue with special graphs like planar graphs, the techniques that exist there, and some other problems, some local search, other things that are also very useful for network design. So that's essentially the general idea of the class. Good. So uh, we talk about a bias box network design. We talk about special cases, Steiner tree, Steiner forest. The motivation comes from this. And the general question that I mean, for each edge, you have some um, Fe of P that it says, what would be the uh, cost of that edge if the flow in, that goes through that is B? And that was the idea that is, uh, we have a set of demands, S1, T1, S2, T2, this is like a Steiner forest, and you want, but they each of them have some demand as well. So them one, uh, a demand two and so on. And we want to send the fellow essentially to do this. One interesting thing that we uh, discuss, uh, we can essentially for lots of this, it is essentially without loss of generalization, but we want to send for, I mean, you can consider different model, but generally this is without loss of generalization. That you can think that, uh, all of this um, essentially demand will go through one path. So it's uh, not necessarily a max flow type of thing. It's just all of them are going through the one path. Now for some of them having this assumption or don't having this assumption, it still implies that we are they are going through one path. And that you can think about it. If you want to connect between these two guys, you can select essentially this was one path say on the internet. Uh, good. So given a set of bandwidth pairs, you want to uh, essentially install sufficient capacities at minimum total cost. We talk about this kind of a cost distance model that, that you can say that this for general FP, you can essentially replace this problem with this uh, um, problem of uh, cost distance that for each edge, there is a cost that if you want to use it, you need to pay that installation cost. And there is some kind of per usage routing cost, L, which is a, essentially the distance. And this is up to one plus epsilon factor. We talk about this kind of generalization that any concave function or subadditive, you can actually approximate it with set of linear functions. The goal here, so this is a very clean problem. You want to connect this guy such that uh, essentially set of pairs such that the demands is the same between the different people. And we want to minimize the total cost of installation plus routing. This is what the thing that we discussed. This is like the cost of the edges that you buy plus the distances between them. Because also, for example, here, it doesn't really matter that whether you want to send through one path or several paths, because anyhow, the path that has the, sh this, the shortest path, that would be the best for this metric once you bought those uh, edges. So that is without loss of generality. You want to send the demands, di or demands that goes for i's, the shortest path between them, that's a routing cost that you are paying. This was some example that we discussed. We talk about uh, some special cases. 
uh, log n approximation algorithm for a special cases of single source. I think this is uh, Goha Meyerson and Monagula. This is there are very nice algorithms for that, and there is some kinds of uh, simple. Uh, I mean, uh, randomized algorithm for the single source case. That actually you can read it, especially I think uh, the, this first paper is one of the best in those things. Uh, Goha Meyerson and, and Monagula. And I think also maybe this one. Uh, Meyerson was one of the authors of this paper. There are several versions of that you can do it. Also, there's the uniform multi commodity. That's the one that I want to say. The uniform multi commodity is that the, this kind of uh, functions on different edges would be the same. Note that here we had C of E and C and L. This is the uniform case essentially. So in the single source case, that all of these SIs, they want to connect to one person. In the uniform case, cost and length function on all edges are the same essentially. So with, with the, this, this is not C of E or L of E. This is C and L or some constant C and L times demand passing through this. These two actually you can get log n approximation as we discussed. And as I mentioned, you cannot get anything better than log n. That was a very important result by Matthias Andrews that he showed that actually for this problem, you cannot get constant factor approximation. Almost logarithmic is the best that you can have. Again, it doesn't mean it practices it logarithmic, but it is a theoretically at this level. Uh, so here we want to talk about multi commodity non uniform by at back, but before I want to talk about the uniform multi commodity. And then we will go there from. That was actually a very big open problem that we could solve it. And we could show that if H number of SITI pairs, we can obtain a practical polynomial time algorithm with approximation ratio order log h to the four. This has been later improved. Here we are just putting log n to the four O tilde, and we are assuming di is equal to one, but it is like the, you get the general idea. And this is like, I think one of these algorithms that I think I'm very proud of it as we have it, because this is the one algorithm that I can describe in a talk. It's like, you will see the whole algorithm here. It was a big open problem. Uh, so it means that the solution, I mean, it was very important and the people tried and couldn't get it. And as I mentioned, the best one was two to the CR root of log n was a paper by Moses Chalikar et al. So that was the previous one. And that was a complicated one. This one actually is the one that is one of the, like may happen less that, I mean, you have a theorem, it is so clean that like, for example, FRT was another one. I could just one or I could describe it. These are like a beautiful paper, essentially, or proof from the book, essentially. This is another one that is actually very nice and they can describe it. Uh, but uh, before going uh, uh, through this one uh, and talk about this algorithm, I want to uh, go and talk about the non-uniform case, and then we will come back here. So the uniform case, I need to um, change the slide essentially. Okay. So, so let's go to uniform by at back before going to the uh, general case. It's actually interesting. So this is the uh, result of Averbach and other 1997. Uh, this is uh, at that time, of course, there was uh, like this was the initial work that was done for the uniform case, and that was the time that I think the portal was there essentially. But the people are using it. But this is actually interesting why the uniform case is easy. So, uh, like here again, this is the problem SITI pairs are given the Steiner forest. We want to find from SI to TI, we want to send the demand DI, the same setting that we discussed. We have a graph of size n. And the edges, uh, I mean, as we discussed before, uh, edges of network must install by purchasing zero or more copies of the cables that we discussed previous times. And generally, we have this kind of the, if UI is less than UJ, then CI is less than CJ. If the capacity is uh, the cost, UI is the uh, essentially, the capacity is UI and the cost is CI. And generally, if the uh, capacity is less, the cost should be less. And more than that, uh, this is the economy of scale thing that the CJ over UJ should be less than CI over UI uh, for, uh, 
j greater than i. So if you get a larger capacity, larger capacity ones, the cost per unit should be less than the thing. So this is some kind of economy of scale that we are talking about and we discuss about it. So uh, then uh, let me say, I mean, some observation here. Uh, so uh, the algorithm that we have it here, we are assuming that we are finding the route SITIs between these two people. So this is the this is the, essentially the graph G. We need to find what is the route, and this is one path we want to write here. And so we decide about this path uh, P of SITI. And then along this path, we are uh, buying enough capacity. And what is the capacity? So let's see them be the minimum cost to cover the total demand for this unit distance. I mean, generally, this problem has a p-test, but this is a good approximation. So whenever you wanted to essentially Essentially, this is a, for knapsack problem. You want to essentially put in the different. So you have tables of different uh, capacities, and you want to make sure that that total essentially matches your demand. So uh, you have a demand, and you have some essentially UI to UN, UL. These are the different capacities that you have. You want to cover essentially with them the total demand. What is the best way? I mean, the best way is that, I mean, you will choose use some of this. This is a knapsack problem. You want to essentially cover this, uh, this uh, demand with minimum total cost. Essentially. However, I mean, this is a, I mean, we, and there's a PTAS for that. But here, for the sake of this, we are already paying log n approximation. So it's not the constant is not the most important one. You can just simply consider this one. Right? Practice is not bad. So you will consider, if you consider the mean of i, CI times the ceiling of demand over UI. So you consider essentially demand over UI times the CI, ceiling of that. This is a two approximation for C of demand. And what is the, again, C of demand, C of demand is the minimum cost to cover a total demand of them for unit distance. If you want to have this, uh, like if you want to have this demand, what are the type of cables that you can buy? That would be C of that. But this is a two approximation for that. This is coming from the knapsack. You can just think about why this is a two approximation essentially. Generally, it's a, yeah, this is the generally knapsack that, uh, like I think, uh, yeah, that you can say half of it will not be empty or something like this. But anyhow, this is something that you can just search and why this is a simple algorithm. But it's not the main point. Okay, but uh, more interesting. Uh, so so uh, essential. Types here, or they don't depend on the right? Yeah, the types. The types are general. So this is the also uniform. So this is the, the type that you have it are the same for all ages. And you have finite number. Yeah, you have finite number. So I mean, essentially here is mentioned. So you can say that. Uh, Uh, so uh, you can actually say that by uh, by taking just some averaging, you can say that at least we need CI times demand of UI. Because if uh, this is some kind of density argument that if you have this demand, this is the minimum things that you can, because this is the, this if you have a set of cables that they can cover this one, then, uh, that uh, this is the minimum one because this is the density. This is some kind of density things. Uh, this is the minimum that you need to have it. And uh, so you need this one. And here, the, the only catch is that here, we don't have any ceiling or floor or something. But if when you put the ceiling here, then you are you can always put it plus one and you are, that can be turned into a two approximation. So that's the idea. Uh, and again, the first part is just coming from some average. We are doing this kind of density argument again. The same thing that we have done it for, for example, set cover. You see that if all of them are covering, that means that because you have a different cables, uh, just make sure that actually it was yes. on. Mm, good. So uh, you always uh, have uh, these things that uh, uh, 
uh, when you actually getting this uh, like a different cable that is covering that, you, you know that, I mean, the, you can consider the average cost for this. And if you take the minimum of them, this is the minimum density essentially. And you need at least this density and uh, because different types, I mean, essentially you can cover more, but uh, the best density is this one. And so you need at least, so this is a, sometimes the best density times that essentially the one that you need. And uh, yeah, so that's it's just simple averaging guide. Now, uh, the, uh, the other interesting thing, as I mentioned, so this is fee of demand, fee of them, is sub-additive. It means that C of X plus Y is less than or equal to C of X plus C of Y. That is very important. Because in some sense, if you want, what is the idea? This is, this is important. It says that if you want to create, if you have some demands and you want to create some cables for it, essentially, and there are some other demands you want to do the cables, it would be better, more cost efficient if you put all of this demand together and create something for all of them. Because essentially, you don't, each of them, you may use something, but if you put them together, then you don't lose anything. You lose at least less. So this sub-additivity is something that is important. Good. Now, what is the algorithm for this? So here the uniform, so for all ages, we have the same cost function. Let's say you can consider all these edges, they have also have a unit length. Even. That is fine as well. Wait, one question. Right now, are you focusing on like a fixed SIG, like SMT or? No, we are considering multi community. We want to connect all of them together. So the demand, is it the demand? Uh, that SITI, demand, the, uh, them, I mean, in general means, I mean, this is, we talk about the general demand, uh, like the demands between, Essentially, demand here is the flow that is passing through an edge. That's the thing that we are talking about. But here, in general, between any SITI, we have some demand. Right, but then um, the demand is so you have a, you find, like, you find this, you find the shortest path. No, no, I didn't mention the output. I will just say the output. So the demand you're talking about the demand for fixed edge. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So here is a, this demand that I talked is demand for a fixed edge. This is essentially flow passing to an edge, which is the sum of the demands of the passes that are going to be. And here, as I mentioned, we are assuming that you are sending to one pass. Yeah. Good. So what is the algorithm that we can do here for this problem? And what is the trick? So the general idea, we want to solve this problem. Let's uh, try to uh, solve this problem via uh, essentially FRT or bar type. Uh, actually, uh, to make it even simpler, we consider a spanning tree result that we want to embed it into a spanning data. We get log, 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 last, but I mean, the explanation would be easier. But you can also save this log, log in to go and use the effort. Good. So what do you do? We have a set of, this is the probabilistic set of trees, essentially, that we have. This is the T1, T2, to T, as I mentioned, you can have N log N, but say here, TH. And then each of them have P1, P2 to PH, but really it doesn't matter that much because I think, uh, uh, what can we do? So we are considering each of these T1, T2, T2. So this is the solution that is very like uh, simple. So you will consider T1, T2, T3. Then for T1, you are finding essentially, see, uh, you are just, there's a unique path between SITI. So, and these are spanning things. The spanning tree actually makes it nice. Everything. These are spanning trees. 
So you will in this one. So these edges exist actually in the graph. Otherwise, you need to smear those edges essentially into a shortest path here. But say that I mean this edge exists in the graph. So you will create this path. There is a unique path. You will do that now on each edge of this tree. For example, there is a three here, and maybe there are two demands that are going through this. One demand is going through here. There is another demand that is going from here to here. So then for this particular edge, you know that how much demand is going through this edge, because this, this is the total flow that is going, demand and flow are the same. How much flow is going through this one? And then you kind of strike, this is the C of that demand, the one that you need to create for this. And you need to pay the cost for that. So C essentially is the cost to create enough cable capacity for this. But again, this C actually, I mean, there is no need to be cable capacity. I think you can generalize it to be any concave function that should be fine as well. But say for now, from comes from the cables. You can generalize it. So the, um, the HD trees because of like the problem. Yes, yeah. So these are HD different trees. So here by, uh, so, uh, and the issue is that, uh, I mean, we can say this one, this is essentially by linearity of expectation, you can, solve this problem on each of these trees separately, and then take the minimum. So you will solve on each of them. So solve separately for each of them, and they take, take minimum. But like, with, with the, I, mean, I don't know, but like, say if you want it random, then that uh, Yeah, that you can get an expectation. That is, you can take one of them random one. Or, I mean, generally, this is the thing that when you have it, I mean, lots of this, you take it and then you take the minimum. That's the easier yeah. thing, the better one. Maybe you can ask, like, whether you need to form the H3 explicitly, or you just. Like, yeah, exactly. So, if you want to use the uh, essentially FRT, you don't need to explain that essentially there is no need to have this exponential, possibly exponential number of trees written, but you can make them essentially smaller, the number. But you can just use that on, and don't. On that one, so that is fine. You get random to read and solve it. So that's it. that is not the main. The main part is that, as I mentioned, the uniform case. So this is the solution. Now the question is that there I mentioned that the uniform case was solved in 1997. Non-uniform case. This is the result that we had. It was I think like 2006, and then like 2000, and there was an open problem during this time. Why was it the case? There is some place that the uniform and non-uniform should be different. And that's the thing that I want to deep dive on. In some sense, the, in the uniform case, I should use some place about uh, this uh, uniform case essentially in the solution. Okay. So far, I have not used any place there. I mean, I need to go deep dive there. Good. So, uh, what is the main thing? The main issue is this one. Consider the optimum solution. So, okay. So, this is the, or so, the solution that I obtained. Now, uh, what was the general idea that we had it? Whenever we had it, we want to say that I, among these guys, I will take the minimum of them. What was the idea? We said that I will consider opt solution. Always I need to, like lots of the time in approximation, I'm working with the opt. I need to massage the opt. What of the massaging the opt? It means that opt should be embedded into each of these guys. This is the opt of G essentially. We need to embed opt into each of these trees. And say that, say uh, log times, say log or log tilde opt. First, uh, so somehow I want to say that when I embed this one into I can embed opt into these solutions such that if I pay essentially log n times opt, then that is greater than sum of or the average of these solutions or this weighted average of these opt guys. So I have essentially the general opt here. Let me, I have the opt here. This is opt of G. I need to get opt of T1, opt of T2, and so on and so forth. 
and say that if I pay, say, log n times of g, then the, uh, if you just get a weighted average, essentially, or expectation of this op, guys, so log times this, essentially, I want to say, and let me use this current. So I want to say log, not the scholar, this one. So if I use log times this, or, or say or log n, then this is greater than or equal to this guy's essentially. Times this is the p1 times this, p2 times this, or ph, I think it is ph. That's the part that I need to see that, and that's the part which is non trivial. Because if I prove that, then it is good. Because then I have, I, I could essentially massage up to change it to opt of these guys, and I have some bond there. Now, if I, this is exactly the thing that we discussed before. Now, if I take the solution on the minimum of these guys, of course, the, uh, uh, like each of these solution, each of these opt would be less than, so opt these guys would be less than the opt of T. So uh, I will say, um, Opt uh, uh, opt of mm, mm. Uh, let me uh, say opt prime C. So opt prime is actually the solution, the best solution on these guys essentially. So the opt is the best solution on this one. So we know that, I mean, opt on the, that tree is better than the opt that I embedded because this is just a solution. This is the optimum solution. So then I can say that, uh, I mean, because we have these equations and each of these opt three essentially is less than that. If I uh, opt a prime essentially, if I take the best opt prime, then uh, essentially that is uh, better than all of them and then, uh, we get log n times opt is greater than this. So this is the log n approximation. So this is exactly these equations that we talked before. Mm, give the talk by Steiner three. I think it was the previous lecture, if it's not here. Yeah, it was in the previous lecture that we discussed about it. So this was a general thing that we mentioned for a Steiner theory or group of Steiner theory, how you can write it down and then that's it. So uh, anyhow, so we will do that. We need to embed opt into each of these trees and then say that this opt is, great, is greater than or equal to the optimum for that tree. So if we take the optimum on, among all these trees, then it is at most log n times opt. And that's a good solution. And because this is the spanning tree, you can just take that solution. Again, if you use FRT, then you need to smear this one also into the actual thing and say that if I do that, the cost does not go up. Good. Uh, for the thing that is this one, let's go for the next. Good. Uh, so uh, let's define this one. So we want to essentially consider this opt of G. Okay. Good. So, uh, and why this problem is non-trivial? Because when you opt, note that opt is some in some graph G. So this opt, I mean, it may send the, these ones essentially to a different path. The solution, I mean, the, the different pairs essentially can be used different paths. And then when we try to embed it into opt, so how do we want to embed it? So the only obvious way to embed it is that, I mean, like uh, you will consider uh, like any, uh, so we, when we try to embed it, 
You will say, okay, Opt is using essentially some of this uh, flow path to send, for example, from, uh, so this, let me actually erase this one. Better. So, uh, okay. So this is like uh, this, for example. So this is SI to TI is coming here from S1 to T1. Then of the second opt, it may come here and use this one and then goes from S2 to T2. And who knows, maybe this is S3 is coming and using these ones and comes part of this and this to some part of this to go S3. So it is a very complicated thing. That's the optimum essentially. We need to massage up the section. How can I embed this opt into the tree? And note that here for each of these functions, it according to the flow, for example, here, there are two of them are using it. So according to these two, I'm paying some cost because I'm paying, this is opt exactly. Put this one together such that for all of them together, it can create. And this function is sub additive. It means that if you are putting lots of guys together, <laughs> then you are in the meditation. Good. So, and now when you try to embed from this opt to some tree here, some particular tree here that we have, so maybe just use a different color for the tree. So if you consider this tree here, we try to embed this opt things into this tree. And then here, I need to say what are the paths because I ch change completely the structure of this opt. And this is the problem that later we see that essentially in the non-uniform becomes even harder. But in both of the cases that, I mean, I completely need, need, need to reroute this path and then I change the structure and all this kind of cost function, now it will change it. That's the thing that makes it non-trivial. So what is the approach that I will take it? This is, this is a very important one. And then, uh, so when we consider this uh, opt, essentially opt of T here, if this is a 3T, how do I map this guy? I will take any edge. So I will consider a path between SI to TI, for example. So this is, uh, this is S1, this is to T1. Then say from S1, I will go to this edge A, to this vertex A. So here, I need to somehow smear that again to this. I will go say A is here. I need to send this flow of this guy. So the, the demand of this one is D1. So I need to send first the demand D1 from S1 to A. Then maybe after this one, this is B essentially. So then I will send it to B. So then I will again use this one and then send it to B. Note that here I'm using this guy twice now. And then maybe finally from B, I will send it to T3. This is the things that I'm doing from opt to here. This is the way that I map it. Edge by edge, I will map these guys to the corresponding system. And then what do I do? I will do map this one. And then I will buy uh, then uh, here. So note that, for example, if, we, if I want to do this one in the, in the tree itself, I will just directly send the path here. I don't do this kind of a stupid way of getting sending from two to A and then paying again and B and then this. But I want to say that even if I do this one, it's still it is a good solution. I mean, it is I can compare the whole thing comparing to the opt. And this is and this part is the bit non-trivial part that you need to think about it and why it works for uniform but does not work for non. -trivial. Good. So uh, let's 
Let me just say the intuition, then we can go through the formulation. Why is it the case that for uniform? This is the main idea, is that we will embed these guys. Yes, when we embed it, the distances may go up. And these are essentially, you will pay. Uh, so here, the distance times the demand is the one that we are. Paying. But, uh, so uh, this is the main thing. So uh, in the optimum, there were some edges that they were doing essentially cost sharing. What's the meaning of that? Several demands are coming to this one and they are, so there were some edges in the optimum, like this edge, for example. There were some cost sharing here going there. I want to say that still I have the same cost sharing here. And this is the main, and even probably more cost sharing here. That's the idea. So the cost sharing that I had it in opt, still I have the same cost sharing here. And because it is uniform, now as long as, and now the uniform says that the ages are not different. So as long as you send in, through any other path and you have the same cost sharing or even better, what's the meaning of better is that because we are now using this one, you may actually share more ages on, on the one edge of these trees. We are not losing anything. So we are using two things here. The cost sharing that happens here, the same cost sharing we have it here because edge by edge we are doing that. And now because it is uniform, just the length of these edges may go up, but still the cost sharing, the function would be the same. So I don't need to pay anything more. That's essentially the whole intuition that why uniform. Actually, I mean, you know, I need to remember some of these. These are non-trivial because you need to think about it. I had it for some time to remember what was the reason. But that is essentially the main reason that this works. Now we can write to go to the formula. I can just we can go quickly to the formula. But this is the main uh, intuition that why for uniform it works. And this paper was a Fox paper. I think I believe that was also even after actually Bartal or maybe the same time or something like this. But uh, but anyhow. This uh, this was a Fox paper, so it was a, a non-trivial thing to do this one and observe these uh, things, and that was the main problem that it was solving. So, uh, I believe so. I think you should double check. I believe it was there. No, you don't need to span it. The same thing that I have mentioned, you can actually using Barcode. You can. So the same fact that I have mentioned that when you do this sharing edge by edge, you are doing that. You can show actually, you can smear any solution in the, if the tree is not an optimum solution, if the tree is not a spanning tree, it's still the solution that you will get it because age by age, you will embed it into the original graph essentially. And then once you have a solution in the bar, so we need to pass it back to a solution. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, exactly. That part I'm talking about, again, using this fact of sharing. Because there also you are sharing that the same kind of edge sharing that you have it, you are doing exactly the same thing and you can say that the cost actually does not go up if we do that. Yep. Because instead of each edge, you are just using the shortest path there, correct? Uh, uh, so, uh, okay, so that's a good question. So in, in, like if you have a Bartol here, if you are using Bartol, for example, so in the, or like FRT, then this edge that I have it in this tree, T, so I say I want to use bar voltage. This edge, I don't have it in the original graph. So what do I do in the original graph G? In the original graph, instead of this, I need to buy a path essentially between. So this is AB. I, I need to buy the path between AB. I will buy the shortest path again here. And this is essentially uniform. You don't change anything because all edges are the same. As long as the length are the, does not change by much, then this is the same thing. And then it would be just less in the graph because again, this uh, it, it would be not more because A, B, then it would be more sharing essentially you will do that. So this is the whole idea. As long as the, because it is uniform, just the lengths of the edges are important because these are the same edges. And whenever you do more cost sharing, you're putting more demand. So if some people are coupled with each other, like these demands are using here, and still in the graph, they should use it. The same thing that we are using here. These guys were together here. They will be together here as well. So 
the cost sharing should be not anything essentially that you will do cost sharing before you should do it, but maybe more. That's the part that saves you. The same thing happens here. When you go through this path, still they are cost sharing. So any pairs that are using this, they are still using the shared things, but they are using shared paths. Of course, some edges of this might be shared even with more, but that saves cost. So you don't pay anything. So you can actually use FRP for this as well. And don't pay this lug, 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 lug in factor. But, but these two are the super important thing for the uniform code. Okay, now, I mean, we can just go through this. I want to quickly go through the formula and just mention that why can't we get it? This is the, like, if you want to change this intuition into the formulas. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, here, essentially, We are, so essentially, so what do we do? Let's define, so this is the whole idea again. We want to have, get this opt, we want to embed it into some tree. We get opt of here, essentially. So uh, then, uh, so this is the whole thing. So let's define for the edge E, uh, I mean, let E be the flow that passes through the edge E in G. So that would be essentially means that for all, uh, uh, Essentially, uh, here, uh, by UV means all demands here, for all demands. So for all demands, UV that I have it, if E belongs to the path of, the QUV is the path between UV in the graph. If E belongs to that, them of that, this is the flow of that one. This is the path, the flow that goes through this edge. So in that case, uh, So in that case, then we have this one that, uh, so in that case, we know that opt of G is essentially this one. For each H E, L of E, the cost of E times the C of F of E. That would be the all of G essentially that we pay. No, uh, that was the mapping that I have mentioned. When you consider any edge x, y in the G, then we associate with this edge in the tree, which is in the, this top part of this, the path TE between x and y of length dt of x, y is equal to L. Good, so uh, any edge, so this is opt again, this is some edge that E that are here. Then for this edge E in these three things, I will put, this is between, I don't know, A, B. So here I will put it between A and B here. This is the, so this is the T E. T means the path between essentially corresponding to it. And uh, of course we know that the, uh, expected length of essentially, so the length of this path would be L of E times alpha T, and we know that the expectation of that is essentially like, or the expected length of that. Okay. As we discussed by linearity of expectation, we can focusing only on one tree, I mean, essentially to do that. And now the cost of uh, designing, um, So uh, now, uh, if you consider uh, like uh, for each of this E prime that belongs to this, for each path, essentially for each edge in this path corresponding to T of E. Uh, so we have this uh, L of E prime times the cost of C of the, the flow that goes through that, we can just replace that is essentially the distance on the tree. And essentially, because this is the, because these are the all have the same function essentially. And that would be L of E times alpha T times C of that. So that we have it essentially. So for each edge, we can do the corresponding, uh, for each path corresponding to each edge, we have this kind of thing, the cost of that, this one. Now, uh, so 
essentially this is the main formula that we have here. So this is the main formula. So if we design a 3T, so if we design a, a net, essentially a network in T for all passes T, T corresponding to this. So that was the way that we are smearing essentially optimum edges into the path here. Then for each uh, uh, edge E belongs to EG, uh, we have a demand FE that goes through this edge. And then for uh, say also, so do we define essentially FE on edge E? So FE on edge E. E in, in G. And then we define F prime E prime. This is for each on each edge E prime in T. So F prime and E prime are essentially on the three part and F E is the part on the original graph. Now, uh, what do we have? We know that, uh, what is the F prime E prime? F prime E prime is essentially, is the sum over all edges of the graph, how much uh, flow is going through that edge. And then that you need to sum it up over all that this E prime belongs to T of E. So for each edge of the, the tree, you will see that this edge, is somehow some some edges of the graph the path passing through this edge the flow of that would be that system. So that's the part essentially that we have it here. Now let's just write the equations. So if we write the equations, uh, we have uh, these things that uh, some of e prime belongs to t. So that's the thing that we try to see that. So we want to say what will happen to the opt after doing that. So some of the E prime belongs to the edge of T. So L of E prime times C of F prime E prime. That's a cost that we need to pay. We need to, this is sub additivity part that we need to do. Essentially more sharing we have it. That's the main part that here, essentially we have more sharing in the tree than in the original. So what will happen just, we will just write it down. The LE is the same. So this is the same equation. Just for this one, I will just replace F prime of E prime with this formula. Just put this formula here. Correct? This is the F E, F prime E prime. Good. Now the C of this, because of subadditivity, is less than or equal to some of the individual guys. So here I have just, instead of writing C of Sigma, I will write Sigma of C. And here I will essentially just change the same thing. So it says that, uh, so instead of C of the whole things, it would be C of the individual on this. Now what will happen? So uh, then I will uh, essentially do this one, I will, uh, change, uh, I will bring LE essentially inside this equation such that I can, in, inside this sigma, such that I can change the order of the sigma, uh, the indices. So I will prime just E prime, L of E prime times this here. The same, the same, the, the rest is the same essentially. Now here I will change the order of the sigma. I will essentially do some kind of double counting. Now uh, here, I will say, instead of uh, doing for all E prime, I uh, just doing this, I will consider all E belongs to E of G, and then E prime that belongs to T of E, L of E prime times C of C. So this is just essentially changing the order. And now I have the, no, uh, now I am essentially, essentially done because this uh, L, L prime of E prime, I can just replace it with L of E times alpha T. That's the thing that we can do in expectation. So now everything essentially, then I have this factor alpha times this, but this was exactly optimum G that we did before. So the main thing here is that we are using this LE essentially is the same for all edges. We can just replace it with LE times alpha T. This is the uniform thing. And this is the case that when I, here, this is the main thing. We are just doing more 
cost sharing. Like anything that any cost sharing that we are doing in the optimum, we are also doing in this treaty, maybe more. And that's the thing that we can actually, uh, then we are not losing when we are doing this. And of course, I mean, uh, here it might be the case that like, for example, here, instead of sending S1 to T1 here, you may send this demand to here and then to here, but this extra things was accounted in alpha, the distortion. So alpha is it. So in some sense, yes, this extra things we pay, we may save even because this age now is using more things, but this extra length that we are paying, that we are only paying in alpha. So we are in a good shape. And yeah, essentially that's, that's a whole proof. So we say that this is a case that we can do it uh, for um, this uh, opt of this uh, uh, person is, for opt of this guy instead of um, opt can be embedded. And again, I will repeat that here we use essentially embedding into a spanning trees, but if you are doing embedding into a, a tree and then from this tree, like FRT, which is not a spanning tree, some arbitrary tree, then you want to embed it back again because each edge will be corresponding to the path there and this shortest path is less than the length of this guy or that mouse this one and uh, you are doing again any cost sharing that you are doing in the tree you are doing also in the graph so you don't lose anything essentially and that's the thing so this was uh, essentially again non-trivial things uh, you should check again this uh at that time whether it was Bartal one some versions of Bartal or not I think I think it was but Anyhow, it should be checked. But this was the first paper essentially that gets for non-uniform uh our Bahazar that for uniform by a clock actually you can get plug in up. Was there like a problem before? Or... Yeah, that was an important thing essentially, even at that time, of course, like the first paper. I, I was not there at that time. <laughs> there. Uh I was just I think that was 1997. That was the thing that I went to uh, IUI at that time. It was a high schooler. Uh, there, but uh, yes, uh, I believe that was the case. And this approximation was very general. Network design was, I mean, very hot topic. The, the problem that remains, of course, is a very important problem. Still, we don't have this problem, like for example, TSP or this kind of some of these price collecting, Steiner forest, and others still remain that at this time that people now it just becomes very interesting to improve them. Uh, but yeah, this was the, and this is the, I mean, why this was interesting because of Steiner forest. Because uh, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, Steiner tree is considered a lot. 1836, that was the things. Then Steiner Forest was essentially, I think probably one of the early one was this uh, uh, AKR and Goman Williamson, these are the papers, probably maybe before that. And then they said that what is the generalization? Then say that essentially the cost on each edges, instead of being just a simple cost, it also dependent on the fellow that is going. And then, of course, they, no, uniform versus non-uniform. So that's the, that, that was the path, essentially, that this problem considered very important. And this is the way that they are. Uh, but in, in general, in network design, these are the, some important things. So uh, you want to, uh, so this was also even the AKR, uh, or like Agrawal Kalen Ravi and Goman Williamson, they have considered this. Generally, when you want to send it, so Steiner Forest is just connect the pairs. You generally want you have some connectivity requirements. So in some sense, here is a connectivity requirement as well. So you will say dem i. It can be just not some number. You want to say that you can think about this dem i are just separate uh, cables that you are putting, such that if some of them fails, still the others can send the pseudo as well. So you may put several, even um, you know. Uh, when you send the flow of them, in a sense, you are creating uh, a them essentially different paths there. Here, of course, they, this is uh, so. This was also these are some other words that you're doing. So all of these things are next to each other. In some sense, you will repeat one edge several times to get the connectivity. So in some sense, you can consider that if there is an edge between these two guys, this is the flow that goes there. So you will. Uh, this is the them the demand between these, you can just re replace each of them with several of these things. That is, this is some type of connectivity that you are having 
them connectivity between these things. But uh, then there was the other problem is that what about if these are the same set of edges, but you may you cannot use more than one edge more than one time. Then what can you do? There are a set of problems there essentially for that problem. But with this joint essentially. That's again a set of works essentially are doing that, iterative rounding, etc. All talking about this essential aspect of the problem. Uh, good. So uh, I think uh, this was about uh, this set of problems uh, that we discussed for this problem. And this was a major, uh, I mean, open problem. This is generalization of Steiner forest. And this, this is like a very basic Steiner tree and, and tree, minimum spanning tree, then Steiner tree, then Steiner forest. And this are the generalization. I think at that time, actually, they don't call it Steiner forest. Steiner forest is a more recent term. It was used generally as Steiner tree. But then it becomes uh, interesting and it's like this. Uh, uh, good. So this was essentially for the <clears throat> a uniform case. And this one you could get uh, essentially uh, uh, for uniform, you could get uh, polylog approximation. And as I mentioned, there is also this algorithm for the single source is interesting. Uh, I think uh, probably we don't, I mean, Time to cover it, maybe I mean the future things I will put it there and then the video. But for the single source non-uniform, that is also very interesting. That you want to have a set of uh, SIs uh, that you want to all connect to this root R. This is essentially some kind of generalization of Steiner, but this is a non-uniform. This one for this one also there is a log n approximation that we will use it actually. And the algorithm for this is non-trivial. This was this by Meyerson, it's around 2000. It's a beautiful algorithm. And so it's randomized algorithm and how you do it. That's what also Fox Stock paper. That's what the very thing. We are using that one here, but I mean, you can just go and read the paper. The algorithm is simple. The analysis is interesting as well. So this by Akbar or rental by these are, some of them are beautiful randomization. You will see that. And that's the very nice things about uh, this, um, Set of problems. Uh, I think for the non-uniform, probably I don't want to just break it here. I will talk next session. So for now, I think we talk about the uniform case and the single source, as I mentioned, you can read it. Then we will talk about non-uniform and then we will continue after that with the cut problems, et cetera. Um, okay, so I stop here.